All right, so this video is going to cover uh, basic operations of both the HP 10B2 Plus and the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus. Uh, these are both financial calculators. They are 95% the same in what they do and how you use them. Uh, but we do want to cover some of the slight differences in case you're more familiar with one or the others. So that you can see how to accomplish the same thing with both calculators. Uh, it's important to note that my purpose here is not to teach you how to actually use the, the financial math or any of the functions. It's just to show you the mechanics of how to use the calculator. So that's all I'm going to cover. Uh, first thing, how do you turn them on? So there's just an on off key in the upper right on the Texas Instruments. On the HP, it's down on the bottom left. That's how you turn them on. To turn the calculators off, again, on the TI, you just push the on off button. On the HP 10B Plus, you're going to push the red shift key and then push the on off button. So it's worth pointing out, uh, there's shift keys on both calculators. On the Texas Instruments calculator, uh, all the gray letters on this version, you will see different colors with this one. This is a professional model, but um, it really doesn't matter. They're all kind of the same. Uh, so you've got the second key and that will access all the extra functions that are in the lettering uh, on the body of the calculator above the keys. On the HP, you have both red shift and blue shift. And so you can see the red functions are on the keys below the white lettering. The blue functions are on the body of the calculator above the keys. And so in general, you know, that's how you access any special functions between the two calculators. So let's turn them both on. And so now some basic use. So one of the things that you're probably going to want to know, how do I clear data? So if you've got you know, numbers typed in here. How do you clear that out? So the clear key on the Texas Instruments is in the bottom left. So on the HP, it's the C key, the clear key right there on the bottom left. So one of the other things that may be useful is clearing everything on the calculator. Um, this is a little easier to do on the HP. So what you're going to do is you're going to do clear all, which is in red on the C key. So you do red shift hit the C key and that clears the whole calculator, time value of money, cash flows, everything is clear uh, back to zeros on this calculator. On the TI, you actually have to do a few different things. So to clear regular numbers on the screen, you can just use the regular uh, clear key. But the time value of money section would not be affected by this. So the way you clear those keys is you can see right above the FV, you see clear TVM. So you would hit the second key and then FV. And now that will write zeros over all of the time value of money keys. In addition, uh, the Texas Instruments calculator has special functions that use worksheets, such as the cash flow sections. When I hit the CF key, it enters into a little area here, and you can see I've got a number written in for cash flow one showing that was not affected by either of those two clearing steps. So in order to clear out those worksheets, you have to first be inside of the worksheet, whatever it is that you're trying to clear. So here I am in the cash flow worksheet. Next, I need to hit second. And then right above the clear, you'll see in gray here, clear work. And so now that has zeroed out all the cash flows in that section. Now, in addition, there's the NPV section, the IRR section. So if you ever need to clear any of those out, they've got data written into them. You need to make sure that you do second clear. That way you clear out that worksheet or else uh, this calculator will save your data. So to exit, I just hit clear and now I'm back out to the main function screen. So the next thing we'll cover is setting up your decimal places. You can see both of these calculators. I have four decimal places. I do recommend that if you're working in finance, you do set your calculator to give you four decimal places. And the reasoning is, uh, generally speaking, we work in basis points whenever we're dealing with interest rates. And so with interest rates, if you're working in decimal form, the basis point is the fourth digit past the decimal. And so if you set your calculator to give you four decimals, you don't have to worry about multiplying by 100 or doing any conversions. It just gives you the basis points uh, on your interest rates as presented. So um, on the HP, this setting is controlled under the equal key where it says in red display. And so how you change that is if I want to set my decimals to a lower number of digits, 
I first hit Redshift, then I hit the Enter key to give me the Display function, and now I enter the number of digits that I want. So if I wanted eight, I push eight, and now I have eight digits. If I want to go back to four, I hit Redshift, Display, four. And that's how you change the decimal places. On the Texas Instruments calculator, it's above the decimal key where it says Format. So I'm gonna hit the second key, hit the decimal place. This gets me into, again, a little worksheet and it says, well, how many decimal places would you want? Well, I can say eight, and then I have to hit enter to confirm that entry. And now you can see I've got eight decimal place digits. So if I wanna go back to four, I'm still in the worksheet. So I can hit four, enter, and now I've got my decimal set up. Uh, there's other settings in here if you want, you know, different things for your dates and everything else. But for the most part, the setting that we'd most be interested in is the decimal places function. So we hit clear, we go back out to the main screen. Uh, the next setting we're gonna look at is the periods per year setting. So on the HP, every time you do clear all, it tells you how many periods per year the calculator is currently set to. So let's say I wanted that to be 12 periods per year. So I'd push 12, redshift, payment key. And now when I do clear all, you can see I am set to 12 periods per year. If I want to go back to one period per year, I would hit one, redshift, payment key. And I can check that by doing the redshift, clear all, and now I'm back into one period per year. On the TI calculators, the period per year function is above the I key, so I hit second, I. And so here is my current setting. If I want to change that to 12, I type in 12 and then hit enter. And now I'm in 12 periods per year. If I want to go back to one, I hit one, then enter, and now I'm back to one period per year. And now, after I've cleared that out, I'm back into the main area, and my periods per year setting is going to remain however I left it. The last setting that I'm going to cover is changing from beginning mode to ending mode. Now, if you don't see anything on the calculator, you are in ending mode, which is the default. If you need to switch over into beginning mode on the HP calculator, you simply hit redshift and then the MAR key. You can see begin, end under the MAR key in red letters. So uh, redshift, hit the MAR key. Now I'm in beginning mode. If I need to change back, redshift, MAR, and now I'm out. You can see it gives you a little indicator if you're in beginning mode. Again, if it's blank, you're in ending mode. On the TI, beginning and ending mode is controlled by the setting above the payment key. So I hit the second key, I hit payment, and it says I'm in ending mode. So if I want to change this setting, it's a little complicated. Um, you can see in small letters it says set. So the set function is above the enter key. So I'm going to hit second, enter, and that flips it to beginning mode. And you can see whenever I clear out, it gives me BGN on the screen. I am in beginning mode. If I want to go back, I go back into the setting by hitting the second key and the payment key. And then I do second, enter, and it has now flipped me back into ending mode. Whenever I clear the calculator, it doesn't show me any options. So I am in ending mode. Next up, let's cover the location of a few keys that you may find useful. Uh, the first is the key that flips a number from positive to negative. So if I enter in 50 and I want that to be negative 50, the key that controls that is right here above the blue shift on the HP calculators. See, it adds the negative symbol. I push it again, it flips it back to positive. On the TI calculator, it's right next to the decimal. So if I enter in 50 and I wanna change the sign, I can just push that plus minus key next to the decimal key. And if I wanna change it back, push it again. Next up, entering exponents. So if I wanna raise two to the fourth power on the HP calculator, the exponent is a redshift function under the multiply key. So I hit redshift, X, four, enter. And that's how I raise two to the power of four. So just note that the redshift function under X, that's where your exponents are. On the TI, if I want to do the same thing, the exponent key is right above the nine. So I do two, Y to the X, four, enter. Okay, so there's no shift function, it has a dedicated exponent key. 
Uh, the last key that I'm going to look at is the reciprocal function, which is taking a number and turning it into its own reciprocal, such as what if I want to turn 5 into 1 fifth? Well, I can use a reciprocal function, and that is underneath the divide key. So I have 5, then redshift, hit the divide key, and now I have 1 fifth. On the TI, I hit 5, and the reciprocal key is right above the exponent key, 1 over x. Well, there I've got 1 fifth. Uh, I find that that is actually a very useful function to learn how to use whenever you're doing financial math because often we have very complicated calculations in the denominator of some of our functions. And it's actually sometimes easier to work the denominator first and then turn it into its reciprocal and multiply times the numerator. So the next thing I'm going to cover is entering values into the time value of money sections. Now, both of these are financial calculators and the time value of money sections operate almost the same exact way. You can see the top row of the keys on the HP in IPV payment FV on the TI. It's the third row down in IPV payment FV. Same keys, same order. They do the same thing. So. Let's say that I was doing a very simple present value calculation where um, let's say that I've got five years. So I hit five and then I hit the N key. Um, I have an interest rate of 10%. So I hit 10, hit the I key. I'm going to calculate the PV so I don't touch it yet. I can enter in data for the payment. Let's say I'm getting $50 per payment. 50, then hit the payment key, and I have a final payment of $1,000, and then I would hit the FV key. That has entered information into the NI payment and FV. If I want to calculate the present value, I just push the PV key, and there's the present value. To do the same problem on the TI, uh, basically the same entry steps. I have 5 for my N, 10 and then push the I, 50, payment, 1,000, FV. Now, the last thing is if I want to compute the present value, I cannot just push PV. I first have to hit compute, which is in the upper left, and then push PV. But otherwise, it gives me the exact same answer. Now, the next thing is to remember if I'm going to clear my data, if I just push the clear function on both calculators, it will retain the information in the time value of money. You can see this by pushing the PV again on the HP, and I get the same answer. If I do compute PV on the TI, it gives me the same answer. So all the data is still stored in the time value of money section. To clear this out on the HP calculator, again, I would hit the red shift and then clear all. Now, if I push the PV key, it doesn't do anything. On the TI, if I use the clear, that doesn't clear everything out. I need to clear the time value of money. So I hit second FV that accesses the clear TVM. And now if I do compute PV, nothing happens. So now both calculators are cleared out. The last thing I'm going to cover is entering cash flow data in case you're going to do an NPV or an IRR calculation. So on the HP, we're going to use the CF sub J key that is in the middle of the third row. So in order to enter a cash flow into year zero, I just type out that cash flow. So let's say it's 100. I want to make it negative and then CF sub J and it will flash CF zero negative 100. If I want to enter a cash flow for year one, let's say it's 50, I hit cash flow and then that's cash flow year one. If I want to repeat that cash flow, I can just continue to push the CF sub J key and it will just continually enter these cash flows. Now, if I wanted to calculate an internal rate of return, I need to use the redshift CST key. So you can see underneath it says IRR, so I do redshift CST and there's the internal rate of return for this series of cash flows. If I wanted to calculate a net present value, well, I need to give the calculator an interest rate. The HP uses the I key to hold the interest rate for the NPV calculation. So let's enter 10% for the interest rate. Then I need to access the NPV function, which is under the PRC key. So redshift PRC, and there's the NPV. 
Okay, so let's perform the same calculations on the TI. So to enter cash flows, I first hit the CF key. Now I'm in the cash flow worksheet. If you find that there's information here, and by the way, you access other cash flows with the down arrow, and you can scroll back up also. Um, if you find that there's information here, remember that you have to clear the worksheet. So second, then hit the clear key, that clears the worksheet and it will reset everything in there to zeros. So if I wanna enter my cash flow zero as negative 100, I have to hit the enter, and then that has entered negative 100 as cash flow zero. To go to cash flow one, I need to scroll down. And by the way, you can scroll back up and re-edit previous cash flows here. So I'm gonna scroll down to cash flow one, I enter in 50. Now, if I wanna keep accessing cash flows, I just scroll down and the next thing that it shows me is a F. This is a frequency. It says frequency cash flow one. How many times would you like this cash flow to repeat? So while I can scroll down and enter 50 again, and then I could keep going to cash flow three and enter 50 and then keep going to cash flow four and so on, you can also repeat cash flows. So first let me rewrite this as a zero, scroll back up. So if I wanna repeat this cash flow, I can use this F as a frequency to repeat that. So if I wanna repeat it four times, I hit enter. So now it will treat cash flow one, which is set to 50, as cash flow one, cash flow two, cash flow three, and cash flow four. It will have repeated it four times. Now, if I wanna calculate the IRR, I push the IRR key, then I hit compute. This is 34.9, which if I go back to the HP and recalculate the internal rate of return, you can see we get the exact same answer. To do the net present value, I push the NPV key. I have to enter, my interest rate is 10, and then I push the enter key to confirm that in the entry. I scroll down and then hit compute, and there is the NPV. And recalculating the NPV on the HP confirms we have the exact same answer. Now, once again, remember that if I do not clear this worksheet, it's going to keep this information. So while on the HP, I can easily just clear everything out. Here, I would need to clear the worksheet while I'm in it and then clear to come back out. And now I'm back to the home main entry on the TI. So that's all the basic functions of both of these calculators and some of the significant settings that you're likely to need. Uh, beyond that, obviously both calculators are capable of doing much more, but this should get you started and then you can look up and find any more details on any frequently used functions or calculations that you need to do. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave a comment um, and I will get back to those as soon as I can.